here, and it's good to be here among all of you folks that I've met in various circumstances. <laughs> we who dissent are not the terrorists. It's the Cheney-Bush regime who's committing violent disobedience against the global legal order. And the constitutional remedy is impeachment. A government that flagrantly violates international law is engaged in criminal behavior, even on a domestic plane. So says Richard Falk, a professor of international law and practice at Princeton. And he says, to resist reasonably a violation of international law is a matter of legal right. I was in federal prison when the Twin Towers were attacked, under lockdown by the time they fell, and released in January 2002 into a very different climate of dissent. I come to this forum biased against militarism, the militarism that robbed me of my two older brothers, Daniel and Thomas. I named them here because their names were never etched on the memorial wall. They were Marines in Vietnam and did not survive the post-traumatic stress and the Agent Orange poisons. Militarism continues to violate every law of decency, humanity, and civility from the torturous methods of counterinsurgency taught at the U.S. Army School of the Americas and reflected in Abu Ghraib and other American prisons, to the illegal bombardment and occupation in Afghanistan and Iraq with an estimated one million non-combatant deaths. One million. We who dissent are not the terrorists. I am compelled by conscience to speak out against militarism. It poisons the earth with depleted uranium, transports radioactive waste from weapons manufactured through the heart of our city, and enriches the mercenaries of Blackwater, Halliburton, and all the other war profiteers who operate with criminal impunity. Each of us has only the stubborn weight of our resistance to confront these injustices. Like Aaron Watada, the highest ranking officer to refuse deployment to Iraq, and more than 60 other patriots from within the military who've made public their refusal to not participate in this illegal war. Many more do so without press attention, like the hundreds of thousands of civilians who take to the streets to say, end this war now. We all have a responsibility, Lieutenant Latata says, as they determined after Nuremberg, whether you're the lowest soldier or the highest ranking general, or just a regular civilian. We all have responsibility to resist and refuse enabling and condoning this criminal behavior. Well, Lieutenant Watata faces a second court martial, October 9th, and if convicted, a maximum of six years in prison. My six-month tenure was for a misdemeanor trespass in a nonviolent campaign drawing 20,000 to the gates of Fort Benning, Georgia. Since 1990, over 250 human rights defenders have collectively endured over 100 years in prison for speaking out against torture. Prison taught me a little bit about what it takes to survive in a totalitarian environment. But we're not yet a totalitarian nation. This isn't Burma. Even though the president has systematically shredded our Bill of Rights and flagrantly, flagrantly undermines constitutional checks and balances with signing statements and executive orders, we the people still have rights. Even though the Pentagon equips paramilitary police units in U.S. cities with M16s, armored personnel carriers, and grenade launchers, do we have those here? Even though state and local police accept the military as a model for their behavior, with the shared training and technology producing a shared mindset. We who dissent are not the terrorists, and the mindset of the soldier is not appropriate for the civilian police who confront not an enemy, 
but individuals who are still protected by the Bill of Rights. We have seen in Asheville the ugly face of police force, the snarling dogs, the machine guns, the SWAT teams, the surveillance helicopters, the home invasions and electric shocks. Force and threat of force applied not to violent terrorists, but to citizens daring to speak out and rise up in nonviolent dissent. But the poor, the dark-skinned, the immigrant, the addicted, the unhoused, and the mentally ill have long endured the brunt of police misconduct. And like it is in prison, it seems that law enforcement is arbitrary and selective, giving the lie to the concept of equal justice. We demand oversight and accountability. And however challenging and disturbing our civil resistance may become, we are not the terrorists. We are residents and citizens of this country who care deeply about truth and justice and who love the earth and our children and our grandchildren, who want to preserve, protect, and defend our freedoms. We do not want to be at war with Iraq or with this city or public officials charged with keeping the community safe, but we must speak out, we must stand up. Even though the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force uses local, state, and federal law enforcement to suppress dissent on the left and on the right under a dangerously broad definition of who are domestic terrorists. We who dissent are not the terrorists. Our challenge now, as nonviolent activists, is this. Escalate morally, not destructively. And as Edward R. Murrow cautioned, we must not confuse dissent with disloyalty. We must remember always that accusation is not proof, that conviction depends upon evidence and due process of the law. We will not walk in fear one of another. We will not be driven by fear into an age of unreason if we dig deep in our history and our doctrine and remember that we are not descended from fearful women not from women who feared to write, to speak, to associate, and to, defend and to defend causes that were for the moment unpopular. Get up, stand up, stand up for your rights.